would like to acknowledge the territories for which we all live and work, and I would like to acknowledge the people who have endeared themselves to this land since time began for allowing us to conduct this ter- this business in their territory. I am pleased to share a summary of the FNHA annual report for 2021-2022 with you today. Please note that a video link and a copy of this presentation will also be made available to you. 2021-2022 was another challenging year marked by the ongoing impacts of concurrent COVID-19 pandemic, the toxic drug crisis, and several environmental emergencies related to climate change. The uncovering of unmarked graves at several former residential school sites has reverberated through families and communities. We stand side by side with one another, with each and every one of you, and acknowledge your strength and resilience in these difficult times and honour those who are lost. Our annual report begins with acknowledgement of these challenging circumstances, and I recognize the incredible strength and resilience First Nations have shown. We raise our hands to the communities, leaders, staff, and partners who work for and alongside First Nations people throughout these difficult times. We have been humbled by your efforts and strength. Our report highlights the FNHA response to these public health emergencies and our work on addressing anti-Indigenous racism. We have also provided updates on progress against our four ongoing goals and key priorities. The incredible work of our regional teams is highlighted and we provide updates on our performance measures and financial reporting for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. As in previous years, our goals and the seven directives continue to guide our work. Our four goals were enhance First Nations health governance, champion the BC First Nations perspective on health and wellness, advance excellence in programs and services, operate as an efficient, effective, and excellent First Nations health organization. Six key priorities under the goals were public health emergencies, anti-racism and cultural safety and humility, renewed partnerships with First Nations, wellness, knowledge development and exchange, and service excellence. Goal one is about enhancing First Nations health governance. And this includes our tripartite and bilateral partnership initiatives. The images on the right of the slide highlight our work engaging with First Nations and work with partners is on track, even through public health emergency pressures. Last year, overall caucus satisfaction was 85%, and we continue to advance joint work with the FNHDA and the FNHA and other partners. Progress in this goal was also supported by work on key priorities about renewed partnership with First Nations. Some highlights of Goal 1 work include prioritizing engagement and hearing feedback on our plans and programs and services. Since 2020, we held over 300 engagements with First Nations. Feedback informed the refresh of our five-year plan and program transformation, such as medical transportation and public health emergencies. We also engaged on our FNHA and tripartite evaluation responses. The FNHA continued to evolve operations, bringing services closer to home through ongoing regionalization and an organizational design review. Moving operations closer to home is one of the ways we uphold the seven directives and the 2012 consensus paper. Further, regionalization, including nursing operations and regional staffing and decision-making and enhancing community buildings, maintenance support. Regional public health response capacity was also increased. As well, our Metro Vancouver office project on Tsleil-Waututh Nation land broke ground in the spring of 2021. 
Goal two is about championing the First Nations perspective on health and wellness and advance cultural safety and humility in the health system. Our performance measures highlight the hundreds of community wellness initiatives supported through wellness grants. We continue work to advance our joint anti-racism, cultural safety, and humility action plan. A key highlight was finalizing the BC Cultural Safety and Humility Standard with Health Services Organization, the first of its kind in Canada. This standard provides a toolkit for the BC health system. Progress in this goal was also supported through the work on our key priority areas of one, wellness, two, anti-racism, and cultural safety and humility. The FNHA continued to implement the Memorandum of Understanding to Improve Mental Health and Wellness Services. This includes 55 funded initiatives in 172 First Nations, and 11 more initiatives from last year. The FNHA supported over 147 land-based healing initiatives. With Canada and BC, the FNHA is supporting renovating six First Nations treatment and healing centres and building two new centres. Two partnership reports were jointly released through the FNHA Office of the Chief Medical Officer and the BC Office of the Provincial Health Officer. Sacred and Strong, Upholding Our Matriarchal Roles, reports on the health and wellness of First Nations women and girls living in BC, and the First Nations Population Health and Wellness Agenda is an eagle-eye view of the health and wellness of First Nations people in BC. It includes 22 health indicators to be reported on over the next 10 years. Staff also work to honour missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. We offered health and cultural supports to communities and funding to advance healing and supported community hosted events. A new complements and complaints process for FNHA staff was launched. The FNHA is also supporting development of a patient care quality, culturally safe and humility strategy. Goal three is about our ongoing work to support quality programs and services. I am pleased to say that much work progressed despite various public health emergencies. Our performance measures highlight increases we've seen with community reporting, despite heavy pressures on your time. We've seen improvements in health benefits, increased rates of eligible clients, client satisfaction and service quality for medical transportation, pharmacy and mental health. Progress in this goal area was also supported through our key priorities on public health and emergencies. Our goal three highlights include support for in-community vaccination cl clinics and vaccine uptake campaigns, deploying rapid antigen tests in and supports for companion travel, isolation and meals. In 2021, 15% of all toxic drug poisoning deaths were First Nations, with First Nations people dying at 5.4 times the rate of other BC residents, and the rate is even higher for First Nations women. Our focus on this area centered on harm reduction, prevention, keeping people safe while using, creating accessible treatment options, and supporting people on their healing journeys. This work included in-person harm reduction and training and distribution of naloxone through community pharmacies and directly to First Nations. We also provided 4.5 Three three million in grants to support harm reduction. With the residential school uncoverings, the FNHA worked hard to support communities in healing by expanding access to counseling services, cultural supports, and through our First Nations virtual substance use and psychiatry services. 
the FNHA work closely with communities to adapt and respond to health-related impacts of climate change emergencies, such as wildfire and flooding. An emergency response team was established to provide environmental health, mental health and wellness, and operational supports. Goal 4 highlights our work to operate as an effective First Nations organization. Our performance measures highlight progress in areas such as employee engagement and an 81% response rate on our HOW survey. Advances in this area were also supported by our work in two key priority areas, knowledge development and exchange and service excellence. Highlights in this goal area include an urban and away from home survey and engagements and distribution of 879 tablets and over 1,100 phones to First Nations clients through partnerships. A key file priority for the FNHA is supporting 15 First Nations-led primary health care centres. Shortly, the Williams Lake First Nations Wellness Centre will open its doors. We expanded our virtual pathways for care, establishing the First Nations Virtual Doctor of the Day and the First Nations Virtual Substance Use and Psychiatry Services as permanent services and creating new services such as Maternity and Babies Advice Line. First Nations health benefits were further transformed through a new online adjudication system for mental health and wellness counseling benefits and improved access to over-the-counter drugs in naloxone, nasal naloxone. Nine engagement sessions were held as part of the Medical Transportation Transformation Project, and several program enhancements were implemented, including a web-based online booking system, mail rate changes, and a temporary increase to mileage reimbursement rates. Aboriginal Head Start on Reserve programming was expanded with 146 communities now receiving funding. The report also includes five regional updates. You can click on the QR codes to see videos from our vice presidents and regional operations to learn more. The regional report highlights programs and services, delivery innovation services, and expansions and engagement activities over the past year. This annual report marks the end of our work on the first five-year plan for the FNHA. We have learned many valuable lessons from this plan and the first phase of the FNHA's operations. These, plus the guidance we heard from you during engagement, shaped our next five-year plan known as Paddling Together. We are busy implementing our plan and are c committed as ever to working with you as a health and wellness partner. Thank you for your time today. Sachatia. So